I have the image open that was in the slideshow and it's a little easier to show the process of cropping by actually doing so. Although there will still be demo videos for this uh, lecture, inside the lecture I want to do some hands-on activities as well. And that will be a theme for basically every lecture between now and the end of the semester. And so you might double dip if you watch the lecture and you watch the demo videos. But when in doubt, um, it's better to see it twice than to miss it along the way. And so when you're cropping an image, it's incredibly important to always choose the width, the height, and the resolution. But a good practice is before you even crop, like if you choose step one of my cropping process that I listed in the slideshow, um, you can start the cropping process. But you should know what you're opening. You should know what type of file you're using. You should know the color modes. You should know how many pixels and what the resolution is. And so before you even start the cropping process, you should go to the image menu and choose image size. And you should check out the image size dialog box because it gives you facts about the image. And so if I zoom in here, you can see that the image size is 3.72 megabytes. The dimensions are 1,317 pixels across and 988 pixels tall. Uh, the width is 18.292 inches and the height is 13.722 inches at 72 resolution. Now I said that you should never resample, it's a bad idea, it's bad practice unless you're doing it for a very specific reason. And so in the image size dialog box I just want to answer the question, well what could it be? What size could I output it? And so if I was going to put this on the web the answer would be I could output it at um, 18.292 inches by 13.722 inches or more accurately, I could say I could output this as 1,317 pixels across and 988 pixels tall. But if I wanted to print it, let's say I wanted to print it on an inkjet photo printer, I could change the resolution to 240. Notice how as I change it, the number of pixels, it's not changing. And the width and height, it's basically resampling the image in the sense where it's putting the pixels closer together or it's sp spacing them further apart. In this case, I'm squeezing more pixels into every one inch. And so if I wanted to output this on a photo inkjet printer, I could output it as 5.488 inches across and 4.117 inches tall. Taking it a step further, if I wanted to send it to commercial offset and use the default of 300 pixels per inch or DPI, however you want to describe that, I could output this image as 4.39 inches across and 3.293 inches tall, so like really small. And so before I go to crop it, I need to know that, right? I need to know that if I'm going to crop this to 7 inches across and 5 inches tall at 300 resolution, I can't do that because the biggest I could output this as is 4.39 by 3.232. And if I was going to uh, print it at 240 resolution, I could change it and say, okay, well, I could crop it to 5.488 by 4.117. Now, I'm going to leave it at 72 resolution because whatever I'm doing with this, I've decided it's a digital output. And so if I wanted to crop it to 7 inches across by 5 inches tall or whatever you want to crop it to, I have plenty of pixels for that. I just cannot crop it bigger than 18 by 13 inches. I'm going to accept the changes and say, okay, well now I know how big I could crop it to. Once you know what you could crop it to, now you can actually crop it. You can grab your crop tool, which would be step one. You can click and drag to make a selection of the area that you would like to... I'm going to turn this off for a second. You can click and drag to select the area of the image you want to keep. You can make it as big as you want. You can make it bigger than the picture. But if you do that, you're going to end up with a white, um, a white workspace, and you probably don't want that. And so try to stay within the picture. You could make it smaller if you want, and then you can click and drag to figure out what part of the image you'd like to crop. And so maybe I want to crop it just like that. And when you're done, you can choose a check mark. But don't forget that you need to choose the settings, right? So right now I'm looking at this rectangle. I don't know how big that's going to be. I didn't make any decisions. If I look at my options bar across the top of the screen, you can see that by default, um, because the last time I cropped something I chose these settings, that the width, height, and resolution is selected. It's going to crop to 7 inches by 5 inches at 300. Now if that's what I want, then that's what I want. But when I looked at the image size dialog box, right, image and image size, I decided that I was going to crop it to 7 inches by 5 inches, but not at 300 resolution. I was going to crop it to 72 resolution. It makes a huge difference. It's going to look the same to us on the screen, but the file size is going to be much smaller and it's going to have many less pixels. And so once I have all those settings correct, the width, the height, and the resolution, 
you can finally accept those changes by hitting the check mark and it will crop your picture. Always double check that it worked. So go to the image size dialog box by going to image and image size. And if I did this right, it should tell me that the image is 7 inches across, 5 inches tall, and it's 72 resolution. And you can see that my project is 7 inches across, 5 inches tall, and it is 72 resolution. If it does not tell you what you think it should tell you, you need to hit cancel and you need to go back and do it all over again. Do not recrop the same image over and over again. If you mess up, hit cancel and go back to the original image and start over from scratch.